Greetings. This is Time Rider at Chapter 4. What you're looking at here is a Matchbox 12C Land Rover Safari. They made millions of them. They made them in 1965 and converted them to Superfast in 1970. And they were a part of the Matchbox stable until 1971. This is also a Matchbox 12C. Although not quite as good looking as the previous one. And aside from the things that you can see on the surface, it has other problems too. I've already restored one of these and I want to do something different with this one. I bought it as a part of a lot and paid a whopping two dollars and fifty six cents. After restoring the Rootmaster, I want you Brits to notice that I did call it a Rootmaster, I wanted to try something a little inspiring. And why not look to the internet and the great one, Steve McQueen, who owned a Land Rover for inspiration. And I also found this picture of a Land Rover for sale. And I was inspired. This is what I want to do. Kind of. I guess you could say this might be called a Matchbox Extreme Makeover. So let's take a look at what I'm working with. Well, the front wheels are kind of sticky. And the back wheels just aren't connected anymore. Yeah, you see the chassis was broken. And the body was full of chips, although it still had that wonderful Lesney trailer hitch. Yeah, okay, the windows were kind of dirty, but I think I can clean them up a little bit. Yep, this will do just fine. Let's get to work. So, let me take a look at the parts here. Yep, the chassis is broken where it holds the axle in, that's why it's falling apart there. And, uh, yeah, there's a little piece of the chassis that uh, I actually broke off. I suppose I could glue it back on, but truth be told, I lost it. Um, I don't know where. Probably threw it away with other bits and pieces of this. Uh, the glass? Oh, well, what can I say about the glass? It's not cracked, I can say that about it, but it's a mess. The interior's covered with all kinds of schmutz. At least the steering wheel and the precious tow hook are there. I can clean that up with soap and water. And of course we got the body. I'm not buying another luggage rack for 10 bucks. I'm going to have to figure out what to do with that big thing on the roof and the two little horns. But anyway, I'll figure it out. Now we're down to basic parts and we can put our aircraft paint stripper to work. And then a nice bath with the purple toothbrush. The paint came off really nice, but this model, it has a lot of details, a lot of uh, door panels and on the back there's all kinds of hinges and a couple of license plates and so there's a lot to it so once I got done giving it a scrub I still had to go at it with my dental pick and try to get the rest of the the paint off and get it down to the bare casting While I was cleaning and picking and doing other things, I decided, you know what, I'm going to cut that doggone thing off. So I put a cutting wheel on my rotary tool, and I just started cutting away at it. I'll cut it off and fill in the hole. So I cut it off 
and I cut off the two little horns and I filled it in with body putty and then I just started sanding and sanding and sanding until I couldn't see the hole anymore I also wound up using a little bit of uh, super glue and baking soda and then I primed it with Tamiya light gray and since I wanted this to be a two color model I had to do a little bit of taping here and I decided to tape off the body first and paint the roof. I'm using Tamiya brand masking tape and I have to work around the little door on the back because every photo I saw had the the door the same color as the body but the little strip above the door uh, the same color as the roof. So here I am in my uh, portable paint booth, which I really like, by the way. Uh, getting ready to shoot some white paint. One of the reasons I use the gray primer is because trying to paint the white on the white primer would really, really suck. At least doing it this way I can kind of see where where I painted. The paint went on really well. And I think I got pretty good coverage. I didn't want to leave the interior white. I decided to paint it with a flat brown to kind of give it a, I don't know, a, a leather look, I guess. Then once I finished with the flat brown and let it dry, I did a wash, kind of like I do with uh, the hard plastic matchbox tires to give the interior of the model sort of an aged look. Basically it's just a very watery, take a little bit of uh, black paint, like a couple of drops and, uh, and shoot them some thinner in there and it makes a really thin black, almost like an egg wash for a baker but I used it on this to get some age. So now it was time to address the broken chassis. And a while back, I had purchased some all-terrain tires and wheels from Greenlight. You can kind of see them down in the lower right-hand corner of this segment. I purchased a total of uh, four sets of wheels and tires, and I actually bought them to do another project uh, that I may or may not get to here soon but I thought that they would work for this so I took some strip styrene uh, basically it, it's square it's not quite square but it's pretty close to being square and I cut four sections and I basically epoxied uh, two pieces uh, right above where each axle would normally sit. And I made sure that they were 
squared up here and fairly straight. And then what I actually did was uh, I ground out the groove a little bit and took some steel tube and epoxied that into the groove to house the uh, the axles that came with the new wheels and tires. And so here I am, I had deepened that groove a little bit with my rotary tool and uh, cut a couple of uh, small, I guess you could call them steel axle housings. And then once I got the whole thing together, I painted it black. But that was kind of the theory of uh, how to make a lift kit for a matchbox. Just trying to make sure they're straight and level. So I had mentioned uh, earlier in the video that I wanted these seats to look a little aged. So I made that uh, basically the tire wash and painted the, the seats with it. Uh, I also painted the steering column black and uh, the center of the steering wheel silver. Uh, trying to give it a, a bit of an aged look. I know you probably won't even see that part of the seat, but I don't know. I just, that's how I am. So irrespective of whether you call it Tamiya, Tamiya, or Tamiya, XF70 dark green was the color I decided to use. I have the roof taped off with Tamiya masking tape. And we're going for dark green here. This model also had a lot of unusual angles to it. You can see there's like a, a body groove that runs right down under the windows. Uh, plus it does have a lot of windows and of course you wanna hit the window openings from every angle to avoid having uh, one of them be a gray strip. You also wanna hit inside the wheel wells to make sure that the inside of the fender isn't just another primer gray strip. I have a lot of people ask me when I do restorations, you know, why I didn't paint the grill or the headlights. And, you know, when I'm doing a restoration, I'm trying to put it back to the state that it was in back in the 50s or 60s when it was made. So it isn't that I don't want to paint things, you know, to add detail to the model in a restoration. It's just that. It's a restoration. Uh, when I'm doing a custom, I'm doing a custom. And when I do a custom, I have no problem painting in the details. In fact, I enjoy figuring out ways to do it. Uh, on this particular model, one of the things I did is um, that little grill piece is actually not chrome or anything. What it is is it's like a screen uh, over the front of the radiator opening. And so I painted it silver, and then I let the paint dry a little bit and went over it with a toothpick to kind of remove some of the silver paint because I wanted it to look more like a screen. And then I, uh, I painted the headlights as well, uh, silver. I went on the internet and I looked. Uh, there's a yellow light on the uh, outside of the front of the vehicle and a white light on the inside and on the back of the vehicle you have uh, a yellow or amber light uh, on the top 
with a red light underneath. So I even try to go as far as I can to be accurate uh, with what color each light is. And I'm just, I'm not using a detail brush here or anything. I'm just using a, a very, it's actually an inexpensive brush that just has a really thin tip. And I like using it for this particular type of work because it it holds the paint really well. It doesn't dump it. Sometimes the detail brush, it seems like it'll get, you know, a wild hair that wants to stick off in some weird direction. Uh, and it'll throw silver paint on something I don't want silver paint on. But this little cheap brush that I bought uh, actually holds its shape really, really well. There you go. Headlights and a grill. Time for some clear coat here. Uh, because I used uh, Tamiya paint, I'm using Tamiya clear coat. I don't like having problems after I've spent so much time on a model uh, having clear coat attack the paint finish. I wound up putting, uh, I believe, three coats on this particular casting. And yes, I did uh, drill it out and tap a hole and I, you'll see I, there's my lift kit and when I put it in I had actually kind of blocked a little part of the hole uh, where I need to put the screw. So I took my rotary tool here, it's not a Dremel so I probably shouldn't call it a Dremel. Uh, and I was just hollowing out a piece of the plastic strip so that I could get the screw back into the base. So once I got it hollowed out like that I went ahead and uh, painted it black. I had to scrape a little bit of epoxy out of the hole but uh, it was pretty good to go after that. Back in the day when I sold auto parts we called this wheel uh, a white ranger. So here I am fiddling around uh, trying to get the axles installed into these wheels and then as you see what I what I intended to do all along was insert the wheel into that steel tube and put another wheel on the other side and Bob's your uncle. We've got uh, a lift kit. So here's a little refresher at where we started. Um, yeah, I did clean up the glass. I didn't really show that part. It's just me buffing on it with uh, various compounds. I didn't have to use sandpaper or anything. Uh, model was pretty chipped up, broken axles. Uh, yeah, it, it was certainly one that needed some love and attention. And here's what we finally wound up with. The Matchbox 12C Safari Land Rover Extreme Makeover Edition. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll tell you, I really enjoyed making this model. This is Chapter 4 with Time Rider and we'll leave the light on for you. Be sure to subscribe and thanks for watching.